Next up, we have Refuse to Die. That's right. Before we go into that, I do want to mention, again, to use our Twitter and Facebook. Right now, we are going to give away gold for tonight. So hop on Twitter, hop on Facebook, twitter.com slash WGLNA, facebook.com slash WGLNA. Just tweet at us, message us, interact with us, and you might just win a week's worth of premium and 2,000 gold. Yep, as soon as some people get some tweets out to us, we're going to go ahead and pick a winner here pretty soon. So make sure you do that right off the bat. It's not that hard. You can sign up for an account. It's free on Twitter. And the best way to get your name out there, be a, a player or a team or just a fan. And to see more updates about WGLNA, make sure to follow that Twitter account. Let's talk about Refuse to Die. Let's go ahead and look at a highlight for this team, some of the amazing plays we saw this week for these uh, pretty pretty stellar plays coming out from them, especially up against Cap Fast Nation, which, again, themselves being a very stellar team. And using that T-71 here on mines <laughs> to dodge in those different those different shots. He was actually able to survive that engagement and swing it around here. Refuse to die is able to take down Cap Fast pretty decisively with the remainder of their tanks. Rue, kill your thoughts. Yeah, this was a really confusing match actually for me to watch. I had trouble keeping up with what exactly was going on. It just flip-flopped all around. I didn't expect Refuse to die to actually win this one, especially fighting under the hill like that. But when they did that, I was genuinely surprised. And surprised indeed. And also Cap Fast Nation moving up against them here and refuse to die, refuse to die in a great position with those three tanks are able to get that capture point, allowing them to be up two to one. And in this time on uh, going back and forth here with the AMX 5100 battles, which we saw a lot used, and you'll see a lot of that, uh, that tank being picked in the eSports side of World of Tanks. But getting those surrounds and also locking down this IS-3 using that T-69 at the same time as well. Um, again, really, really great play, use of cover, getting the surround on their opponent, and landing those shots. That's how they were able to win. Yep. Refuse to Die showed they were able to uh, keep the advantages every single time. Realistically, in all of those games that we just saw, it was more so of the mistakes of their opponents and then them knowing what to do with those advantages. And then we saw big, big wins, especially that one on mines. I mean, normally, when you, whenever you have... Um, center control, you normally have the advantage. Cat Fast Nation had the advantage. They had that center control, but they couldn't make anything of it because of, uh, of just the HP advantages and, of course, the positioning. I really felt like Refuse to Die did a great job every single time of knowing how to position their tanks and slightly altering them as the battles went on. Let's go ahead and take a look at the team roster as we get to know these players a little bit more. Justin Ward, Scorpion King, World War II Fanatic, Quasiar. Anubis, Scringly, a bag of kittens, which is turning out to be one of the favorite names here in the office. Uh, Valkyrie Riav Riavuas, I'm going to have to ask him how to pronounce, he pronounce that. CPYR and Agonize, they will be the members of Refuse to Die. We also have an interview ready with the representative. It is the man himself, a bag of kittens, is joining us right now via Skype. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you. You can hear me? <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> First oh, stop, good. what's the history of this name of Bag of Kittens? Oh, God. Uh, you know, I, I've changed my name a few times, and uh, a Bag of Kittens came about sort of playing off of the whole uh, targeting thing or asking for cover uh, in-game. So if somebody tees me, it says they're requesting fire on a Bag of Kittens, or you know, if, <laughs> if someone actually manages to kill me, they kill the Bag of Kittens. I just found it humorous. Uh, to, to play off those words, so that's kind of the direction I went with. Um, You're a corpsman in the Navy, so first off, thank you for your service. And can you give us a little bit more history about yourself and your team, how long you've been together, and how long you've played World of Tanks? Yeah, um, our team is primarily from the Legion, uh, Havoc and all of its sister clans. And uh, we have got together about uh, two months ago, uh, I started the group deciding I wanted to focus on tournaments. We recruited about 30 people into the group and then kind of over the last month started trimming down people based on people's uh, commitment levels and, and you know what kind of tournaments they were hoping to play in. Obviously our, our main focus was the 742 format. Um, and then in the first qualifying round you saw us bring in two teams which was kind of like that last little elimination to find out what players we wanted to to bring into um, the second qualifying round and now into the, the future tournaments. 
This is a pretty big announcement coming from Wargaming about the WGLNA. When it first came out, did you guys take it pretty seriously? And if you did, how devastated were you when you lost in qualifier number one to EC? Yeah, um, we took it really seriously because it was funny. Uh, Fnatic is, is kind of a co-captain on the team, and him and I were talking, and we said, hey, let's get ready for, for Eurosteel and WCG because I just saw on, on their website that WCG officially announced World of Tanks for the second year in a row. Um, so pretty excited for that. And then literally a day later, uh, the WGL popped. And we had both been watching um, the Russian version of WGL. Um, so when that popped, we were both really excited for it. And when we went into to EC, we kind of had the same problem. The second qualifying round is we had two matches uh, or two rounds of nobody showing up. And so our first real fight was against a really, really solid team. And uh, after we, we played um, EC, we said we can't do that anymore. Uh, it was pretty hard on the team. So we actually, I made sure uh, personally to schedule a, a bunch of scrimmages and a bunch of practices that really got us ready for the, the second go around. Well, that practice really paid off. You were able to defeat Tropa, Acme Autoloaders, and Cap Fast Nation. Cap Fast Nation was actually one of the favorite teams when it came to different teams talking of who's going to qualify. Was there a lot of nerves going into that battle? Um, there's, yeah, there was a, a definitely a lot of nerves, uh, especially since early on we had some confusion, or, and there was a lot of talk in the team. We're like, oh, man, this is the team that beat Fulcrum Gaming. We're so screwed, and... Everyone kind of got nervous. You know, we're still focused and we're still trying to, to play really hard. And then we found out it was a different sim team that beat them. And, you know, our hopes got a little bit up. And then we were like, you know, regardless of what happens, I just want to go in and, and put on a better show than we did in Qualifier 1. And then after the first match, I was kind of like, you know, we could do this. Um, I, I have history with Vic. I know Vic from, from a previous game. And... So I knew it was going to be a really tough fight because I know what kind of gamer he is. Um, but after that first fight, I was like, you know, we're we're a lot we're out more in this than I think uh, we thought, and a lot of people thought we were going to be. We definitely are as one of the 16 teams that's going to make it through league play. Do you have any words for any of your future opponents? Um, yeah, yeah. Do you mean just go ahead and underestimate us? Uh, I'd appreciate that. It really helps us out. Um, Looking forward to, to all the good fights. I mean, we've got four clan or four teams from from the Legion in there, so I know a lot of the people we're going to be fighting. So it's going to be some really really tough competition, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, Garrett. And finally, do you uh, have a website, Twitter account, Facebook that people can follow more of your team, and also do you have any shout outs for us? Yeah, uh, we have a website. It's pretty outdated because I've been focused on qualifying, obviously. Um, but it's just uh, www.r2dgaming.com. And uh, I'm working on the whole uh, Twitter and Facebook thing. Um, as far as shout-outs go, I'd like to, to make a shout-out to our, my whole team especially because we put in a ton of time uh, practicing during the week. Um, late into the hour, some of the guys were, were getting only like four or five hours of sleep some nights. Um, definitely a shout-out to Squirrelin and his team, Scurry Hard because they put in a lot of extra time scrimming us so we could kind of um, get a dry run and shake down on a lot of our strats. And then uh, I'd also like to make a personal shout out to my wife for putting up with all the, the crap that goes along with someone <laughs> getting ready for a tournament <laughs> like this. <laughs> oh, well, she's the true hero as well, Garrett. Thanks so much for joining us. We're gonna be sending you this Logitech webcam so we can see your face as you face off against your opponents during the lead. Thanks again, sir, for joining us. Congratulations to you and your team. Thank you. All right, man. Married and being involved in esports, it's people can do it. People can do it when you have a very patient, loving wife. So uh, I look forward to seeing that team and, and Garrett leading the charge as the name of Bag of Kittens, which uh, I think some of the people here at the studio would like to see their team go far just because of that name. Exactly. But they performed very, very well. And again, up against uh, Cap Fast Nation, you know, that was a hard fought match, but it was a well fought match. And they totally deserve to be in the league play. Now, this is just season one. There will be season two later on in the year. And a lot of these teams that were not able to make it via the qualifiers will have a second chance. 
That's right. So don't think it's it's all over. You're you're done for the year. No, you have that second chance. Make sure you're training. Get your team together, and really start going into training. Do 742s. Don't just go pub 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 because yes, it helps out with knowing where to hit your opponents. But more so, you need to know that strategy. You need the experience of the 742 to really compete at that level. That's right. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We come back. We're probably going to have a winner to give out some gold. And also, we're going to have an interview with Simplistic. Don't go anywhere. The wrap-up show of qualifier number two for WGLNA. We'll be right back.